Hello YouTubers, welcome to Fancy a Beer Part 1. If you're just joining me for the first time, welcome to my channel. It would help if you were to see my intro video for Fancy a Beer first to put what I'm going to talk about here into context. In this video series I'm looking at the beer combined sound, light and sound controller, the SFR1, and this is part one of four. I fitted a lot of these to various trucks for myself and others and I don't consider myself an expert by any means but I can speak from experience and that's all I hope to pass on to you. I love this system and this video series is provided to help anyone who is interested in using this piece of tech. And just as a reminder I'm aiming this at starter level for the product and advanced things such as S-Burst and digital switching are not discussed here so if you think this is going to be over your head Maybe not. Before I start, two things. First, in order to use the beer, you really need a PC running Windows 10 or 11 to load the software. I'm afraid it doesn't work natively on the Mac operating system. Second, I really do want to emphasize that you need to read the manual for this product. If you just plug it in and switch it on, you'll most likely get no further. The manual is very intuitive and walks you in step by step. You will also need to look at the software which looks complex but it isn't really. I can't cover off all of this module in four short videos but along with some study on your part you'll be up and running without any problem. So then in this part one of four I'm going to cover why use beer, what do I need to buy, where can I purchase, what support is there, how much does it cost? And lastly, we're going to have a quick look at the software. OK, why use the beer SFR1? It has great functionality. There are six input channels, three servo output channels, and 16 output channels for lighting. It can be user programmed. You can set up your own sequence of actions. It has inertia control, load simulated steering, cruise control, plus loads more. And it's designed for tanks and ships as well, if you've got any of those. Beer is smaller physically than the NFC and is easier to accommodate in a cab with the dash, seats and driver, although the poor driver usually has to have his legs cut off. The price is now better than ever. You have the ability to produce a unique model to your own specification and I have to say it's a delight to use. And if I wanted to install a beer SFR1 system, what do I need to buy? Well, unlike the MFC, which comes as a kit in one box, the beer system doesn't. Whilst you might see this as a minus point, it does allow you to purchase only what you need and not pay for anything you don't need. So here's a list of the parts. At the SFR1, which is a combined sound, light and speed controller. A KUSB2. This is a USB to PC connecting device allowing you to program the SFR1 from your computer. It's much better than relying on the SD card to program. You have a choice of a 50mm or a 65mm loudspeaker. I, I personally recommend the larger one. A large or a small size volume control, not required if you're using a channel to control the volume standby switch. This is recommended and it puts the unit in a low current standby mode when it's inactive and saves on battery power. The USB stick which has the software. This is required on your first purchase but there's no need to buy it again. The AKL8 output connectors. This will easily connect your LEDs and you use these with LEDs that have a resistor built in line. If you're going to use all 16 outputs, you need two of them. The AKL8W is an alternative to the AKL8. It just merely comes with resistors, so you can use LEDs that are wired but don't have resistors fitted in them. The XT60 to Dean's battery adapter, this is required to connect the SFR1 to a NIMH or a LiPo battery. 
there is a Bluetooth module. Only order this if you want to control your truck by an Android device. But lastly, the long, longly named LMIR164 infrared light unit. Now this is for trailer control and is completely optional. You'd only purchase this if you intend to mirror the lights of the tractor unit with your trailer. Uh, the unit comes with both the transmit and receive diodes. If you plan to do that, it might be worth getting this at the same time as the SFR1 because you can install the transmitting diode as part of your, your tractor truck build. You can get a plastic case for the SFR1 to fit into, although it comes in one already. Whilst it does offer some extra protection, it makes the unit's overall dimension slightly large, which can lead to installation issues in a cramped cab space. Finally, lighting. Now, unlike the MFC, the beer system requires you to provide your own LEDs. Options are to build your own, soldering together an LED, a resistor and connecting cable. Or buy ready-made LEDs with resistors in the wires. I have done both. In all honesty, it works out slightly more to buy ready-made ones, but saves a lot of time and effort, especially if you aren't confident with the soldering iron. LEDs and guidance on selection is widely available on the internet. Where can I purchase the parts? In the UK, Elite Models and Aztec Models are two companies selling beer products. You can buy direct from the manufacturer in Germany, but from the EU there will most likely be an import tax. What support is there? Well, there's a very comprehensive beer SFR1 installation and operating manual available online in English and also accessed from within the software. The online beer forum is also helpful. Although mostly in German, they do accept and answer questions posed in English. Then there's people like me and many others out there in the Facebook RC community groups who have good knowledge of this kit and are willing to help. How much does it cost? Not as much as you might think. Typically I can purchase the SFR1 and associated parts for around £300. But please note that price doesn't include the trailer light unit, the LMIR164 or the Bluetooth module. Let's have a quick look at the software. The software is called Sound Teacher and the latest version as of January 22 is version 1.30c. We'll look more in depth at the software as and when we need to but for the moment I just want to show you the basic layout. On opening you'll be greeted with the following screen. You'll notice the layout is consistent with most Windows software and the red triangle at the top shows line 1, the usual file help menu, Line 2, a series of most used icons like Save and Print. Lines 3 and 4, they're a tabular format to access specific areas of the software such as general setup, speed controlling, proportional channels and various other outputs and functions. The screen will change based on whichever tab you click on. The lower red triangle area is in three parts. Left to right we have status, which gives messages where appropriate. In the middle, the controls used on the SD card. And right is where you control USB data transfer between your PC and the truck. Also, you can access the diagnostic screen from here. Here are a few sound teacher screenshots for you.
So there you are, a very quick overview and that's it for part one dear viewer. In part two we'll look at loading the software, the circuit diagram explained, a working test model minus the lighting and the initial setup of the module. I hope you found part one interesting and are still with me. Part two will be aired soon, keep a look out for it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Bye for now.